Hi students, welcome to Turito Live classes. Myself A. Swagat. Today we will be learning about one of the important topics of the cell structure and function where we will be discussing about some of the organelles and we will be learning about their structures and the detailed functions what they are performing within the cell. So, starting with as I mentioned here, this is a topic what we are going to learn here that is cellular organelles which includes some of the mentioned organelles here like the Golgi complex, lysosomes and plastids. So, using these topics we will be having an understanding. So, before going to those topics, let us have a look at the topics like what we are going to have exactly in this particular session. So, we will be observing the structures like I mentioned such as Golgi complex, lysosomes, centrosomes and a detailed understanding of plastids. Now, we will be also be explaining their exploring their functions of all these organelles and then when it comes to plastids, we will be having a look at a flow chart which gives us an insight into the classification of various types of plastids and later we will go through the functions of the plastids. So, this is what I have planned for you for this particular session children. So, before going to these details, let us have a look at the topics what we have already dealt in the previous session. So, let us have a look here. So, in the previous session, we were trying to understand the constituents of the plant cell and an animal cell which was done quite detailed way and we also compared their all striking features and using that we also understood the elaboration of the powerhouse of the cell. So, can anyone just let me know what do you remember when the word is used here powerhouse of the cell? Okay, that is quite simple question, I see some of the responses are correct. So, it is nothing but this particular statement is mentioning about the mitochondria and that is where you will find the powerhouse of the cell. So, that is what exactly is the powerhouse of the cell which generates energy by the process of respiration. If you remember, we were having a discussion on the same topic in the previous session, I explained it in detail. So, we also explained the detailed structure of the endoplasmic reticulum and its function. So, there is one such endomembrane system and it is divided into two types. I expect someone can get me that what are the two types of endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, I, I, I see that uh, I get some responses over here. So, that is quite simple to understand that is R E R and S E R. So, these are some of the types of the endoplasmic reticulum. So, RER stands for rough endoplasmic reticulum, SER stands for smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Finally, we understood the structure as well as function of another organelle that is ribosomes. Now, you might be remembering these ribosomes are the very same ones which were actually on the surface of this particular ER making it rough endoplasmic reticulum. So, this is what we learned in the previous session. Now, we will be moving forward for today's session and we will be looking into some of the details starting with this. Now, here you can see Golgi complex as it is mentioned that is the first organelle for our discussion today. So, it was for the first time Camillo Golgi in 1898, he observed that particular uh, organelle and he named it as after his own name that is Golgi complex. So, in some publications you would read not only as complex, sometimes you read it as Golgi apparatus and in other words you may also uh, come across the word Golgi bodies. So, it is just the same thing they are mentioning in different ways, it is the same thing that is Golgi complex, Golgi apparatus, Golgi bodies all of them are same. Now, it is a parallelly arranged system with many flat discs and sac. So, that flat disc and you know they are parallelly arranged, these discs are parallelly arranged and it forms a sac. So, now this kind of arrangement is referred here as cisterne. So, this is a type of arrangement which is referred as cisterne. Okay. So, these are closely associated with SER. Now, that is something interesting. We are reading Golgi complex. Okay. Now, it is it says that 
it is having a close link with ser which is smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay okay that's good now the question comes here when there is a link with this if you remember when we were trying to understand the endoplasmic reticulum i reminded you that using that particular image it is having a direct contact with the nuclear membrane i'm speaking about endoplasmic reticulum specifically rough endoplasmic reticulum now here in, in this particular session it says that Golgi complex are closely associated with SER. Now I think you understood why am I repeating those topics and this one and trying to connect it because there is a link and we are trying to establish that link to understand the concept. So these are the ones which are having direct contact with the SER and the very same Golgi complexes you would not find in RBCs and sieve tubes. Now, can you tell me where do we get to see these sieve tubes? Any guesses? Okay, so in this particular uh, sieve tube topic, you know, we often come to across in plants where they are involved in transporting the components. So, we get to see them in actually phloem. So, this phloem is actually one of the conducting vessel helps in transportation of the photosynthetic components throughout the plant. Okay? And whenever it comes to Golgi complex, in the case of plants, we use the word dictyosomes. So we cannot call them as Golgi complexes because they are not actually Golgi complexes. But we can compare the functions of dictyosomes in plants with the Golgi complex in animal cells because Golgi complexes in animal cells are designed to perform their own specific function. We are going to learn about it. Now, when it comes to dictyosomes, okay, dictyosomes in the case of plants, you see, they are actually, you know, they perform the function of the Golgi complex and yet they have a different name. So, that is something interesting. So, that is a striking feature which is actually different and that marks the difference between plant cell and an animal cell also. Now, this is how the structure would look like for a Golgi complex. Okay, if you have a close look at it and observe carefully, it was said that it is having a sister name. Okay, this is what I was reading out there. Okay, you see this, it is actually a disc like arrangement. All of this structure is shown as to in, in a 2D, that is 2 dimension. Okay, but if you think about the 3D structure, if you go a bit abstract, you will understand that this is actually a disc. Okay, and as if it is cut off. To make you understand how the disc would look from inside. Now, if you look here, okay, so this is the space into which the substances are available. So, let me draw here something, okay, I'd use another pen. Okay, so if just observe wherever I am drawing the white color layers, you see that that is actually the space which is open here and inside which you see the substances are taking part in several reactions and so many functions occurring here. So that space which I just drew with white pen is nothing but actually known as lumen. So that is known as lumen. Okay, you can see here it is given clearly. So that is lumen. Okay. And if you observe carefully further, you will see there are some bulb-like structures are forming here. Okay. Now, these are something they are actually coming out from the Golgi complex. Now, what are they? They are actually known as secretory vesicles. Hope you got it, my point. So, they are secretory vesicles. Okay. Now, that is good. Now, that is one part. Apart from that, if you observe, you see there are incoming transport vesicles coming to it. Now, why I am trying to show you these incoming transport vesicles and secretory vesicles? Because this is a very complex system. It is working in association with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, if you remember previous session, you saw that the RER was actually manufacturing the proteins. Okay? And SCR was manufacturing something else, lipids, okay, uh, different types of cholesterol and all those stuff. All of them, okay, they pass through this particular system. Now, here what happens, 
this is such a system where it actually you know packs the stuff using this secretory vesicles you know if this is coming out it means it is act destinated to go somewhere within the cell and sometimes the very same secretory vesicle might visit outside the cell also now what do these secretory vesicles contain that is the question so what can you make from that what do these things contain okay so you are uh, dropping in here so you see that as i mentioned just a while ago if you observe carefully you will see that there exist you know these uh, proteins which are forming in the endoplasmic reticulum lipids which are forming in the ser you saw and various other substances they all pass through this particular system and it goes all of this discussion is quite apart if you observe carefully okay i would like to show you something here okay observe it carefully there is a phase called trans phase and another phase called cis phase okay now this trans phase and cis phase are the two different directions showing the orientation of the golgi complex so that's the arrangement what you can see now this is the structure of the golgi complex what we have gone in detail now we'll be moving into some of the functions of the golgi complex now whatever i said throughout the discussion of the structure same thing is mentioned here so let's look at it so its functions include packing you see storing dispatching various products from er as you have to remember one thing this component is actually working in association with ser so that means it is having a direct link with the whole endoplasmic reticulum that's more important here so it involves the synthesis of cell membrane cell wall and lysosomes also so one more organelle which we are going to look today itself so you got an insight from where do we get this lysosome from if someone is asking you like that answer is quite simple we get to have this from the golgi complex okay so here the golgi complex involves in formation of the cell membrane cell wall and the lysosomes hope you got the questions some of you are having some sort of doubts hope you got the answers for them and now if you have any more thing to ask you can ask me using your chat box okay so you see here uh, it produces secretory vesicles it's nothing new to you again because we have seen in the structure okay what do they contain i mentioned you know uh, they contain proteins okay enzymes enzymes are some sort of catalysts they alter the rate of the reaction without undergoing the reaction okay they don't change themselves within the reaction but they alter the rate of reaction in a forward direction in a quite faster manner they make the reaction to occur in a quite faster way okay so they are also nothing but a kind of proteins okay so secretory vesicles in the case of golgi complex whatever they give out they contain enzymes proteins cellulose as you know it is used in cell membrane formation cell wall formation okay and melanin pigment so these are some of the components present in the secretory vesicles okay and it transports synthesized substances to exterior of the cell which i already informed you i told they use the secretory vesicles okay that is golgi complex to make the stuff and dump, dump, dump it in the secretory vesicle and sense it outside i said the same thing is mentioned here it transports the synthesized substances to exterior of the cell so that is actually conditional exterior of the cell is actually conditional it happens only when it is highly required that is a point where you see the secretory vesicles from the golgi complex would be given out of the cell i would like to show you those secretory vesicles like i mentioned these so these are just trying to form something they all are actually forming a secretory vesicles only you see newly forming vesicle so it is just the vesicle where it has to go that depends entirely upon what does this secretory vesicle contain depends on that 
it is decided where this particular secretory vesicle has to go, whether it is inside the cell or outside the cell. So, it depends. Hope you got the functions. Let us move forward. So, like I mentioned, among so many secretory vesicles secreted by the Golgi complex, few of them become lysosomes. Have you got my point? I would like to repeat my statement. Out of so many secretory vesicles released by the Golgi complex, some of them would turn out to be lysosomes. So, we are trying to understand these lysosomes. As you know, they are given out by the Golgi complex. So, they are quite tiny, okay, spherical structures with single membrane. Now, if you remember, I was saying that very same digestive enzymes are available within the secretory vesicles and proteins we saw. Here, because we are trying to understand the lysosomes, okay, they contain several types of digestive enzymes made from RER. Okay. Now, let me tell you one important thing about it. Whenever we think of lysosomes, okay, first thing usually pops into the head. Okay. So, that is the nickname it is having. I will just let you know about it in a while. Now, when it comes to digestive enzymes, you must understand something that it has, it is observed that around 2500 different types of digestive hydrolytic enzymes are present in the lysosomes. It is not only any lysosome I am speaking about. As a whole, if you combinedly observe different organisms, okay, you would find uh, combinedly they are known to have, this particular lysosome is known to have 2500 types of enzymes or the you know proteins which helps in digestion process. And at the same time, it is also understood that lysosomes keep their internal pH quite low that makes making the pH to be acidic. Okay. Now, here these hydrolytic enzymes are used to dispose of the worn out organelles or sometimes even the whole cell. Now, you have to understand here something children. So, what, what do they do that? For example, okay, okay, what can you make out this by looking at this particular structure? Any guesses? What is that structure I just drew? Okay, great. So, it is quite simple, it is obvious, it is resembling like that of a mitochondria. Okay. Now, this is one such mitochondria which is just present inside the cell like any other mitochondria. Okay. But this one is aged, okay. not working efficiently, okay. unable to perform the regular task in a proper manner. In that case, lysosomes would come up to the picture and that would try to engulf it okay, and try to you know dissolve it and use some of the components which are present and recycle them so that the very same components in this you know weak organelle that can be reused again. So, nutrient recycling happens with the help of these organelles. So, not only mitochondria, it can also digest any other plastid available in plant cell because in plant cell we call it as dictyosomes and dictyosomes also perform the function of Golgi complex, sorry uh, lysosomes. Now, fine that is that is one thing. So, that is the reason why they take care of the damaged cellular organelles. Okay? So, when they are able to dissolve the damaged cellular organelles under highly extreme conditions that is adverse conditions, okay? you know when there is no way to do anything to save the cell, now, this is a system you know lysosomes is a very important one. It actually takes a decision to digest the cell. Now, that decision is not taken directly by itself everything is pre-programmed by one main organelle that is nucleus. Okay, th that is the organelle which actually pre-programs every other function which is to be done in future. So, that is the reason why we call this organelle as suicidal bags of the cell. So, that is the main reason why we call it as suicidal bags. So, hope you got my point in lysosomes. Let us move forward. 
this is the structure of the lysosome for you to understand. And if you have a look at it, lysosomes, it shows us clearly there are membranes transport protein available because there is a single membrane which is covering this lysosome, okay, and it is actually covering the you know it is more or less like the plasma membrane itself having the lipid layer okay and inside which you see the matrix again it's a common word matrix is a kind of uh, liquid like substance into which you will find different types of hydrolytic enzyme mixture suspended okay so this is the simple structure which actually acts as suicidal bag of the cells Okay, so let us move forward. Next organelle, what we are to understand is centrosome. Okay, so can anyone guess uh, where can we find the usage of this particular centrosome in the cell? Any guesses? Where do we find the usage of this one in a cell? Okay, so some of you can drop in the answers. Okay, I see that. So it is quite simple, it is obviously shown here. Okay, let us understand that in a while. Okay, you see here, this is actually made of the combination of two different words. One is taken from the Latin language, another is taken from the Greek language. Centrum means center. Okay, soma means body. So, centrosome refers to a component which is present at center of the body. Okay, that is the literal meaning what we can make out. Now, centrosome has granule like structures called centrioles. So, you have to understand something. Okay. If this, let this circle what I have just drawn be the centrosome for example, in that case inside which you would find the presence of centrioles. So, some uh, you know this kind of arrangement you see. Of course, I will show you the structure, but I am just letting you know using this statement. The so, centrioles are hollow and cylindrical structures, they are actually made of microtubules, okay. They are hollow tube like structures like crossed and arranged inside the tubule, okay. Now, why do we need it? It is given here. So, they help in organizing the microtubules and provide structure to the cell. That is one of the function, of course, one of the important function of the centrosome to form the microtubules and provide the structure to the cell. So, can you guess children what is that they are actually telling here about? Some framework of the cell right they are trying to tell here. So, what is that they are trying to tell here? Okay, let me tell you that. So, if you observe here I would like to erase everything here except I would like to highlight something. So, they organize microtubules okay that is great. They provide structure to the cell that is also great fine, but what is that they are trying to tell here is this centrosome is also involved in forming the cytoskeleton of the cell, cyto means cell, skeleton refers to the basic framework of the cell that gives us to this. Apart from this main function centrosomes are involved in pulling the chromosomes apart while cell division. That means, they have a direct activity to do in order to divide a cell which is one of the main function of any organism. So, this is one in short about centrosome. So, let us move forward and have a look here. So, you know if you see look at this, this is actually the centrosome you are looking at. These two are actually the centrioles present. So, if I have to tell you what is that, so the centrioles are there inside the red circle, can you see that? That is actually the centrosome, okay. Of course, you can see there are so many other uh, labelings. I would like to cut it short and I want to show you the only ones which are highly important, okay. So, you see that there are so many tube like structures, okay, available clearly visible to us, okay. When you go further, forward you would see that this is that centriole, one centriole looks like this. You see the arrangement there are 1, 2, 3. Three tubules are arranged, they are 
microtubes in the form of triplets. Now that is what our interesting thing is, you see that microtubes, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So if you try to have a look, this is how if you wish to look at it, you would get this view. Now this is how you would look like it. So when you try to look at it, okay, this is a star like appearance you have and it also makes us like hollow appearance. So that is the hollow appearance we have there, got it. So this is all about this centriole, one centriole, how would it look like? In a centrosome, you will have two of these centriole, making it one pair of centriole in centrosomes. Now what do these centrioles do while cell division is this? You see that? Those two centrioles which are available, they will further divide, okay? And they will be going to different sides of the cell and you see when the chromosomes, when the chromosomes are arranged in this order, you will see, you know, these centrioles will give rise to these tube-like structures. Microtubules are forming some thread-like structures, you see. Those thread-like structures are spindle fibers. Now, those thread-like structures are used to pull these chromosomes apart. So, that is what is the use in during the cell division which is done by centrioles of the centrosome. So, hope you got my point. So, that is the understanding. Now, we are to look into one of the organelle, important organelle, we will be discussing that in detail, plastids. Now, what do you know about plastids? Okay. So, some of you are dropping your answers. Okay, the first thing which popped into your head about plastids is chloroplast, which is one of the important component of any plant cell you would see help in forming the food. So, use the process of photosynthesis, that is correct, yes. So, you see these plastids, they are present in most plant cells, okay, and you will certainly not find them in any of the animal cells, okay. So, because they are plastids, they are actually exclusive to only plant cells. So, just like most mitochondria, they too possess their own DNA and ribosomes. So, we learned about mitochondria, we had an understanding about mitochondria and I told you that the mitochondria if you observe, it is actually having its own DNA, okay, it was something interesting. When it is having its own DNA, it was also having its own ribosome and speaking about mitochondria. So, when it comes to here, you would find even this one having its own DNA and its own ribosomes. Now, that is something interesting. So, it gives us clear indication that even this one that is plastids along with mitochondria were once different types of organelles. I am sorry, they were different organisms itself millions of years back, they actually combined with this one that is a cell and having performing the very same function within the cell. Now that the case is quite different, we cannot separate them, they are actually inseparable. Now these plastids have further classified based on their functions what they do. So if you look here, this is the detailed classification of the plastids. So, plastids are of three types and what you have quoted as an answer was chloroplasts, okay. So, apart from chloroplasts, we know plastids as leucoplasts, chloroplasts and chromoplasts. These are the three types of plastids we have and in the case of leucoplasts, that is a different here. So, if you observe the leucoplast, you would see that leucoplasts is of three types again a leuroplast, lyoplasts and a myeloplasts. So, these are the three types of plastids. What we can find 
under the whole leukoplast and under plastids we find three types of plastids again leukoplast, chloroplast and chromoplasts. So, we will be having a detailed understanding of them now. Any questions as of now? You can drop in the chat box please. Okay. So, this will followed by the flow chart you can see that the very same chloroplast you know it can transform itself into the different types of plastids. So, this is something was there in the beginning much before the formation of these plastids. Now, the very same plastid can turn itself into the types like this ok that is one type the second type ok. So, when it comes to this it can also form chloroplast. So, you observe that the chloroplast can turn itself into lyoplast and chloroplast chromoplast. So, this gives an understanding that one particular plastid can transform itself into different forms depending upon the need of the plant. So, you see leukoplast is of different type amyloplast, lyoplast, proteinoplast. Now, this gives an understanding that a chloroplast or a particular plastid can transform itself into of different types. that is quite simple to understand by looking at this one, but why it happens? Now, we will understand. Leukoplast the first one. So, if you observe the leukoplast for the first time it is actually the white or colorless plastid. So, this leukoplast you saw it was of three different types ok. So, why it was of three different types? Because uh, we have different types of nutrients in the body ok. When we have different types of nutrients in the body you must understand something that this leukoplast is mainly involved in storing the substances. So, when it is actually involved in storing the substances that is one good reason why they are of different types. So, it is having a further classification you can see. So, present in parts which are not exposed to plants. So, where do we find that? We find that in those parts of the plant which are not having exposure to sunlight that is an important point ok. Now, you see here it is clearly visible to us and you would understand a leuroplast they are designed to store only proteins, lyoplasts are designed only to store oils ok, amyloplasts are designed to store carbohydrates. That is the reason why we find leucoplasts having only storage function not more than that. So, hope you understood the content. Any more questions you have children? Any doubts in this? Ok, let us move forward then. One of the one which you have given me as an answer that is chloroplast and you have been reading about this since quite a long time. Let us have a look. So, chloroplast it contains chlorophyll within itself it is green in color. So, of course, you have been looking at plants since when you were born ok you might have an understanding. So, this chlorophyll is the one which makes the plant look obviously green. When chlorophyll I have to tell you one more thing it uses different colored light to trap that light and to convert that light energy into you know chemical energy. Now, it is of different types that is the chlorophyll it ranges from chlorophyll A, B, C, D, E and recently discovered F. Chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, chlorophyll C, chlorophyll D, chlorophyll E and chlorophyll F ok. When there are different types which means they use different wavelengths of light to synthesize their own food ok. Now, you know where do we find this obviously where they have to trap the light. So, they have to present in those parts of the plant the part which receives high sunlight. So, main function is to synthesize starch as you know how does it do that? it does by photosynthesis ok. When it is able to do the synthesis of starch by photosynthesis, so it is quite obvious that we call this one as the kitchen of the plant cell. So, this is what is all about chloroplast in short let us move forward to have a look at its structure. Now, this is the structure of chloroplast. 
you can see it's quite clearly given us some of the detailed understanding okay so it is again just like mitochondria it is also having two layers one is outer membrane and the inner membrane and between these two there is a space known as intermembrane space this was quite clear when we were learning about mitochondria okay that was quite simple now you see it is having uh, some of the substance called stroma inside the inner membrane you see stroma available which is actually more or less like the matrix so inside the stroma you will find drop of lipid chloroplast dna ribosome starch granule and all of this stuff including granum and thylakoid they will be suspended in the stroma so you know understood now what is that importance of all of them all those parts which are actually the components of the chloroplast they are suspended in the stroma so that is the reason why we have stroma okay now if you observe further carefully you would see that each of this one you know what you're looking at that stack which is resembling like uh, a coin okay you see as if it is coins arranged one two three four five six seven so that stack which is forming one over the other like this that whole full stack is known as granum and each coin like thing what you are observing is actually a thylakoid so that is the reason this is the arrangement what you can see and this is the structure of the chloroplast and inside which you will see that the process of photosynthesis occur so that is what is happening here hope you understood the topic quite clear now we'll move forward to have the understanding of chromoplast chromoplast the word chroma it means color chroma means color and this word has been taken from greek language this word has been taken from greek language so colored plastids so they are having colored certainly you would not find chlorophyll in them if you are finding chlorophyll in chromoplast certainly you would not call that chromoplast as chromoplast what do you call that if the chromoplast is containing chlorophyll okay as you are rightly dropping here certainly we would call a chromoplast containing chlorophyll as chloroplast so that is not the case here so if it is like that so you know it is different so this chromoplast contain fat soluble red pigment yellow pigment orange pigments one of the example given here is carotenoids okay and they are found in fruits flowers roots aging leaves etc so one important thing i want to mention the very same chromoplasts are found in these parts of the plant one good example if you see unripe mango it is green in color okay when it is on the plant and just you know about to form itself into a mango a fruit and you would see it is having a green color when this mango ripens you would see the ripened mango would be actually having a color of this that is yellow now sometimes uh, yellow would be mixed up with red okay now that gives us clear understanding that there is a transform transformation occurring between different types of plastids you got it now chloroplast is actually turning into chromoplast hope you understood the point now so that is what i was explaining here so that's what is important that is the reason why different plastids are present in the plant and they have the tendency capacity to transform themselves so it is quite obvious to have the transformation 
Now you see. So hope you understood the session for today. Now here if you observe, we will be understanding, uh, like sorry, uh, we understood some of these topics here, starting with understood the structures of few cellular organelles and you know the cellular organelles starting with Galgi complex, lysosomes, centrosomes and plastids. And then we looked into the detailed functioning of the Golgi complex, lysosomes and centrosomes. So these were the details what we have dealt so far, right? Following which we had a detailed understanding of the plastids with their specific flow chart which is showing the classification and we looked at their detailed function. So hope you understood this session well and if you have any queries you can drop in the chat box we will be addressing them in the upcoming sessions and thank you thank you so much for uh, putting your focus on Torito and welcome these live classes and thank you.